I've used creams in, in the past. The first time around it was great, and I would see obviously a really high amount of testosterone, but also I would occasionally have the doctor would pull the DHT level, and it was also very, very high, like 2,000 or something. The testosterone cream comes mixed in what we call bases. There are various different bases. I've literally used every one that you can imagine. That's why we do the independent testing, not just of the product itself when it was first made, but also one month, three months, and six months later, we're independently testing those products to make sure that their potency remains where it should within an acceptable range. And the goal of what I do is just to teach men that if they don't want to do injections, here's another method of delivery that works just as good. I mean, we know how you, how you like to do the, the injections and now this alternative for men, because you know one of the complaints for many men uh, especially with the testosterone gels. And I know that, you, as you know, like the Traverse study, they, they use the gels in, in these studies. And so one can question the outcome of the study, especially when they had cutoff points of no more than like 700 nanograms per deciliter to say, do they not show the true benefits of it? Or at the same time, the true side effects potentially or, or, or risk factors. Now, thankfully, the Traverse study said it's safe for the heart for, for, for the most part. And but I guess the, the, the question is that gels are very inconvenient for patients uh, for the most part because it's a large volume of right. this alcohol-based gel. It doesn't go on the scrotum. It goes on a large part of the body to get the right absorption, and it can be very sticky, especially in the summer. So that comes that brings us to the, the other alternative is what compounding or specials pharmacies can do is we can make bespoke compounded cream, which is a high concentration of cream that goes over a smaller area like a scrotum, and, and gives us a, a much better absorption, but not everyone believes it because I think they've been kind of missold by the gels, which right. you see extra low levels, like in the Traverse study and, and others, right. um, but it's hard to find you know, the true believers. And I think you've got some data to share with us about levels that you've seen. So just tell me a little bit about, you know, what you're doing with, with your formulations of creams. I know that we talked earlier about many different types of formulations that are available. Right. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's talk about cream. I guess you probably know that that scrotal application, I'm probably more experienced with that than anybody in, in this country. It's kind of what I'm known for, which I think you know that. I've, so the testosterone cream comes mixed in what we call bases. There are various different bases. I've literally used every one that you can imagine, uh, everything from Lipoderm, VersaBase, Atrevis, HRT base. Uh, so you can mix it into a base. I think men need to understand that the maximum concentration that a, that a true respectable compounder is going to do is 200 milligrams per gram. You can only mix so much solid into a liquid before it's going to precipitate out. Yes, I'll see stories of compounding pharmacies. No, we're compounding a 250 and 300 milligrams per gram. Well, it's going to precipitate out. It's not going to last long. Part of getting your testosterone is getting it and it lasting and not precipitating out in a week or two or three. That's why we do the independent testing, not just of the product itself when it was first made, but also one month, three months, and six months later, we're independently testing those products to make sure that their potency remains where it should within an acceptable range. So 200 milligrams per gram is how it should be compounded in its maximum concentration. I prefer the HRT base. Like I said, I've used them all. They, 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 they will all work. I've used them all. You can make them all work. Tell me what the HRT base is, is like. It's just a heavy base. It's, it's, a, it's a vanishing cream. It's a heavy HRT base. It can be used in men and women. It leaves no residue. For me, it literally applies in less than 11 seconds. It just vanishes, no different than putting sunscreen on your face. You rub it in, it just disappears. You're good to go with no chalky white residue or anything like that when, you, when, you're, when used correctly. So we can really talk about how to use it correctly, if, if you would like, and how to get your best levels. Before we do, can you tell us a little bit about how you think the HRT base compares with Versa base? Because you said you've they used both. Work. Okay, so, so, I, so my... Previous go-to base was, was, a, was a Versa base. And HRT base and Versa base both work. The Versa base worked great. It worked, it worked really well. I just found, found that the only difference now is that, is that the Versa base didn't go in quite as quickly and it can leave you more of a little residue there, which is there's no harm in that for men listening to this. Still wonderful levels. The HRT base just disappeared uh, much quicker and left no residue whatsoever. You don't even know that you've really got it there once you do it. But last year, prior to this, this year, 2024, the HRT base was unavailable. 
All right. So I used, so Versa base, what I, I started with Lipoderm base and I went to Versa base and, and tried a couple of other different bases, including a Trevis, which we'll talk about. But the Versa base just became my go-to base before the HRT base because it gave me really wonderful levels. So if a man's going to get a Versa base, he can be confident that it's going to work in the right hands. If compounded correctly and applied correctly, you're going to get wonderful levels. So last year, the whole year, everybody was on Versa base. I did go ahead and uh, let some men try a Trevis base. I would not recommend using a Trevis base on the scrotal skin because uh, several men were left with a severely irritated scrotum, almost raw from that Atrevis base, had a reaction to it. The Atrevis base was not made to be applied to the scrotal skin. You can if your scrotum can tolerate it, but I wouldn't recommend doing it or trying it whenever you have two really other good alternatives uh, when it comes to the you know, HRT base and your Versa base. You know, when it comes to Atrevis, latest and greatest is not always best. Yes, a Trevis will work well applied to other body parts, but we'll tell you why we don't want to do that uh, based on clinical experience. But, you know, guys will get on forums and the internet and a Trevis, a Trevis, a Trevis, because that's the latest, greatest thing that they're promoting. It's more expensive. It doesn't work any better. And if you're going to apply it to the scrotum, it can leave you with a raw scrotum, which most men don't want to have. Well, I mean, they show the graphs, they show the pictures uh, when, they're, when they're selling at the PCCA yeah. um, for yeah. Trevis, and uh, it looks really impressive on, on paper, but it sounds yeah, like you've got ex paper until you get that man with that side effect. And, and with, the, with the Versa base and with the HRT base, you're never going to see that. You're just not going to see that. So I, I, I've used creams in, in the past, and um, in particular the, the PLO uh, base, the polylethicin or, or organogel, which is like a hybrid cream stroke gel. And uh, you know, the first time around, it was great. It was my first kind of foray into, into TRT. I, mean, I had did in, done injections, but then I went a time without the, anything, and then it was put on, on this cream. And it seemed to work really, really well. One of the things I had noticed when I'd go get blood tests, and I was a bit of a naughty patient because I didn't wait long enough. I would apply it in the morning, go to work. I happened to work at a hospital, and then I would go get my labs done there. And so maybe we're talking three or four hours later, and I would see obviously a really high amount of testosterone. I applied this to my scrotum then, but also I would occasionally have the doctor would pull the DHT level, and it was also very, very high, like 2,000 or something. Ironically, I had more hair then than I do now, and after switching to injections, and I wonder if that really didn't even matter what, what you've seen. Going to sh when I show you the levels, well, you know what? When, once we look at some levels, which uh, once again, we didn't really intend on doing today, but after talking, we're going to do it. But the reason, so let's talk about those levels in DHT, for instance. One, first and foremost, the DHT that men measure in their serum after applying testosterone is not reflective of the DHT at the tissue levels that are DHT sensitive, like the prostate or the hair follicle, for instance. Those, those DHT sensitive tissues have their own local homeostatic mechanisms that tightly control intracellular DHT levels. You can raise DHT levels on injections and cream, just cream so much more, right? All right, what is the most common complaint of guys that are on injections, for instance? Well, it's going to be hair loss and acne, okay? They get hair loss. So the hair loss is really related to the free testosterone levels that enter the hair follicle and are then converted into DHT. So if you have an optimal free testosterone level, whether you have injections or cream, well, you're going to get the same amount of hair loss. Raising your DHT five times more or eight times more with cream doesn't give you five times or eight times more hair loss. And there's a couple of reasons that occurs. Is that there's only a set amount of androgen receptors. And once those receptors are fully saturated by DHT, then you can raise the DHT eight times higher. It has nothing to bind to to exert an effect. Why do we see in some instances that the cream will cause more hair loss in men? Well, what the cream does do consistently is it raises free testosterone levels. And since most of us are doing a twice uh, daily application, our levels are fairly consistent. Most men that inject are not. They're going to have a peak and trough. Therefore, their free testosterone levels are not going to be always as optimal and consistent as they are on the cream whenever the cream is used appropriately so that they're going to have more free testosterone to stimulate those receptors to, to, to be converted into DHT in the hair follicle. But if you get an optimal level of a guy that's doing daily injections and his free testosterone level is optimal, he's going to have just as much converted in the hair follicle to DHT. But once again, once those hair follicles are fully saturated, 
it doesn't matter how much you raise the DHT, it's not going to have any further effect. And really, those hair follicles are saturated at a fairly low level of free testosterone. And that's why men that do injections, even though they don't raise their DHT very much, still have a lot of hair loss. That's their biggest complaint. The guys that will say, well, no, when I got on cream, I lost hair a lot more. You know, it, it just came out quicker. I hear that comment all the time. And once again, I just explained why that occurred. Because their free testosterone levels on the cream are so much better than on injections for any given total. And we're going to see that in a minute. I'm going to, and, that, and that reason is because of the DHT. Now, even though we know raising DHT in the serum doesn't have any effect on DHT sensitive tissues because they have their own mechanism where they convert free testosterone to DHT. So it is just excess in the serum, but it does do one thing that we continually see on labs and you're going to see is that that DHT has five times more binding capacity to sex hormone binding globulin than testosterone does. So that DHT binds the SHBG and frees up your testosterone. So you'll see consistently when you guys have the same level of testosterone total on injections or cream, their free testosterone levels are higher on the cream. Now, guys will want to argue, no, I tested my, my free testosterone on injection, I tested it on cream, and they were the same. Look, if you're going to have a level of 1,500 on cream and you're going to test your levels on injections, most guys that test their levels on injections do it when? On their, at their trough, at their trough. There is really no trough with the cream done twice a day. From peak absorption, there's about a 25% decrement at about 12 hours, about 40% after 16 hours, if you look on the pharmacokinetic study yeah. done with the cream. So if you're applying it every 12 hours, there's no more than a 25% drop in levels from peak absorption. So there's not any significant peak or trough at all with the, with the cream. Could you argue that it would be better to do it, do it once a day? That Okay, well, well, let's go into how I, let's go into exactly what I tell men because, Mike, this is going to tell you how to tell men how to do it from somebody that has, you know, probably more clinical experience in treating men with this method of delivery than anyone at this, at this present time. And look, a lot of my colleagues get upset when I tell men or clinics like you how to do it. Uh, when I did, we did with Stephen Devos, you know, so I got some flack and they're like, don't, why are you telling people how to, well, because there's enough patients that need our help to go around. And I have a clinic, most 70% of the men that I see come from other clinics. And when things are done incorrectly, it, it just causes potential problems, misinformation. And so what we're trying to do is there's so many men out there that need it, then I want it done correctly no matter what clinic they go to, okay? No matter what clinic they go to. Because I can't take them all, you can't take them all, but if we all work together as colleagues, we can certainly help men. And the, and the goal of what I do is just to teach men that if they don't want to do injections, here's another method of delivery that works just as good, if not better in a lot of instances, than the injections. All right, so the cream. I love the Topiclick dispensers. Okay, take my top off. I can show you the bottom of it. We'll come back to that. So look, what I love about these tubes is they're TSA compliant. You can travel anywhere in the country or world with these tubes of cream. And you need to put them in your carry-on luggage. Don't put them in a checked luggage because there have been instances where they were stolen when their luggage was inspected and they weren't there to witness the inspection, like when you travel to foreign countries. These tubes are also comfortable where you are comfortable. So keep them in a temperature controlled environment. Don't leave them outside in your car when it's 90 degrees outside and don't leave them outside in your car during the winter. Don't put them in a refrigerator. So they're just TSA compliant. To Let me ask you, if you don't have air con, you know, a lot of people in Europe, we don't have air, air, air conditioning and it's really can get really hot in the summer months yeah. and you can't find a cool, dry place to put it like in. It doesn't have to be cool and dry. It just needs to be not an extreme temperature environment. Let's say you're getting up over 30 Celsius, 40 Celsius. I mean, could you put it in the fridge so it doesn't. You wouldn't want to put it in a fridge because it's going to precipitate out. So you want to keep it above freezing. And, you know, we, we just don't want to leave it in an extreme temperature, you know, 105, 110 degrees for hours at a time. So just where you would also be comfortable, you know, consider it, you know, a pet. <laughs> You're not going to leave it out. You don't want to leave it outside and, you know, freezing weather. You don't want to leave it in your car when, you know, locked up. So just, you know, think of it in, in that or your, or your child. You keep, you know, just keep it where you you would keep your child, you know. So TSA compliant, very easy to travel with. And that's one of the great reasons that we use. When you get one of these new tubes, of course, you need to go to twist the bottom of it to pressurize the tube to get it to start coming out. 
I start my men. I use a 200 milligram per gram solution as we just. You know, so it's about 50, 50 milligrams per click. Yeah. So, so, so men will understand this. They get confused with these. And I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah. Great question. Cause I didn't mention it in my last uh, video on this with Steven. These are 30 gram tubes. Yeah. 30 grams. Well, 35, they put, they put a little bit extra in, but really you only get 30, 30 grams out. People that, but there is a little bit extra in these tubes, but it's just, just for all intents and purposes. It's 30, 30 grams, grams, yeah. All right? And so each click of this topic click is a quarter of a gram. So in a 200 milligram per gram solution, each click is 50 milligrams. It can be made into any concentration, 150 milligrams per gram, 100 milligrams per gram. So you can make it in any concentration that you want, but I start with 200 milligrams per gram. Sometimes I'll have to lessen the concentration in a man for various reasons, which you'll see in a minute. So I typically, my starting dose, every clinic is going to be different. So everything I'm about to tell you is my clinical experience. So I start with two clicks. I start going one, two. It comes out identical to that. That's 100 milligrams, all right? I recommend taking two fingers and applying it to clean, dry, preferably shave and scrotal skin. So look, don't apply it if you're dirty or sweaty. Make sure you're just clean if you're going to apply it. When you do apply it, make sure you're completely dry. So after you get out of the shower or the, or the tub, whatever you do, make sure you totally dry it off because it will not go in well if there's any moisture or humidity in that area. So make sure things are perfectly clean and dry. We've, we've heard a patient using a hairdryer on the scrotum, <laughs> but without the heat setting, without the heat settings. You can do that. You can do that. You can do that. You literally can do that. So clean and dry. When we talk about the scrotum, uh, guys, it's the nut sack and it's the whole thing all over, not any little specific area, but the whole thing all over. It's in a vanishing cream, the one I utilize. And when I rub it in, it literally takes me 11, uh, less than 11 seconds for it to completely disappear. All right. So clean, dry, scrotal skin. It works best if you'll shave the scrotal skin. I recommend a daily shave. No less than every other day. Why do we want to do that? Because when we shave, we remove hair, debris, oil, and more importantly, dead skin cells. So we literally exfoliate the skin and prep that skin to absorb the testosterone its very best. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to watch our other videos on topics around HRT and TRT. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, stay in good health. This is Mike from Balance My Hormones.